popular gun control myth. The assault weapons ban worked, and we need to pass it again in order to stop an epidemic of gun violence. This is probably the gun control myth that I hear and read about the most. Supporters of the ban point to a decrease in violent crime during the ban as their main argument, but unfortunately don't quite look at the whole picture. It is true that violent crime fell during the ban, but if you look at crime data on both a state-to-state -state basis and nationally, violent crime, including homicide, was already declining before a ban was even on anyone's radar. The homicide rate peaked at about 9.8 per 100 thousand people back in 1991 and was already on a downward trend, dropping by almost an entire point before the legislation was passed and signed into law in September of 1994. Murder rates continued to fall during the 10 years the ban was in place, but bottomed out only halfway through in 1999. Homicide rates stayed virtually the same for the last four years of the ban from 2000 to 2004, and then still didn't have any movement until 2000. 2009, five years after the ban had ended. And the murder rate stayed low even after Obama's re-election and year after year of record-setting gun sales. You can also look at the data compiled by local and state agencies and sent to the FBI, which was summarized in a congressional research report in 2012. This report looked not only at general homicide rates, but homicides in which firearms were used specifically. Those rates were already on the decline before the 1994 assault weapons ban and, just like crime in general, continued to fall until the rates were literally cut in half five years after the ban ended. So clearly, the ban itself wasn't responsible for the decline in homicide rates, or else they would have gone back up as soon as it was lifted. But maybe that doesn't convince you. That's okay. The CDC wasn't sure about the effectiveness either, so they conducted a study from 2000 to 2002. The Task Force on Community Preventative Services found insufficient evidence to determine the effectiveness of the assault weapons ban. And it's not that they didn't try, it's just that half of the evidence they looked at in favor of the ban was inconsistent and couldn't be replicated, and the other half was just flat out inconclusive. That was no fun, so the National Institute of Justice did another study in 2004. They found that while crime committed with assault weapons might have dropped, any benefits from this reduction are likely to have been outweighed by steady or rising use of non-banned semi-automatics with LCMs, large capacity magazines, which are used in crime much more frequently than assault weapons. Therefore, we cannot clearly credit the ban with any of the nation's recent drop in gun violence. And indeed, there was no discernible reduction in the lethality and injuriousness of gun violence. The ban's impact on gun violence is likely to be small at best, and perhaps too small for reliable measurement. So they didn't seem to think that it was the sweeping success that we hear about on TV and Twitter and Facebook and Mother Jones. And the National Research Council admitted in their 2005 report that a recent evaluation of the short-term effects of the 1994 federal assault weapons ban did not reveal any clear impacts on gun violence outcomes. Or just what about the fact that when the bill was up for renewal, George Bush was in the White House and was in full support, but there was so little evidence of the law working that Congress didn't even bother. The ban didn't even stop mass shootings, which was what it was originally meant to do. There were still 16 mass shootings while the ban was in effect, which resulted in 237 deaths and injuries. Remember Columbine? That was in 1999, five years after the ban was already in effect. The law also only banned rifles that had two or more cosmetic features that have very little to do with the actual functionality of the rifle. A rifle with only one of those features was still okay. The ban also only applied to rifles manufactured after the start of the ban. Rifles manufactured before the ban, affectionately called pre-ban rifles, were still legal and still in millions of households across the country. So the ban didn't take guns off the street, and it didn't stop people from buying and selling rifles made in 1993 or earlier. It only stopped people from buying and selling the newest models. In fact, shortly before the ban took effect, there was a huge 
huge production surge that actually increased the pool of available rifles before the bill was made into law. So technically, when the bill was signed, there were more assault rifles on the market than ever before. Before the assault weapons ban, the 1994 National Survey of the Private Ownership of Firearms showed that of the estimated 192 million guns in the U.S., 65 million were handguns and 70 million were rifles. According to the ATF, the number of firearms in the U.S. increased steadily during and after the ban, so that by the year 2000, there were 92 million rifles, and that by 2007, there were 105 million. But if Nothing else can convince you that an assault weapons ban would be nothing more than a political ploy to try and win re-election. So-called assault rifles are rarely used in violent crime to begin with. So even if the ban were to actually stop all rifle crime, the effect would be almost negligible. Prior to the ban, assault weapons were used in only about 2% of crimes. The effect of the ban was so small that none of the reports I mentioned earlier even gave post-ban stats. But according to the FBI and Department of Justice data, it was still about 2%. So not only did the number of rifles in the country increase during the ban and after, but the rate at which rifles were used in crime stayed the same. Despite what many politicians would have you believe, the U.S. isn't the only country with mass shootings. In fact, a study of global mass shooting incidents from 2009 to 2015 conducted by the Crime Prevention Research Center found that when measuring by death per million population, the U.S isn't even in the top 10. Norway is the surprising winner in this game, followed by Serbia and France. Finland and Belgium also grace the top 10. Now, you might still want to dismiss all of this as NRA talking points, but you can look at my list of sources in the description of this video and none of them say NRA. This information isn't from the NRA. It's from the CDC. It's from the Congressional Research Service. It's from the Department of Justice, the FBI, the ATF. It's from other independent organizations. I can't make you accept any of this information, but the facts are out there. No one knows exactly how many gun owners are in the U.S., but a 2018 Gallup poll found that 31% of respondents personally owned a gun. In 2013, the number was between 22 and 29%, so it's steadily rising. As of 2017, the U.S. Census Bureau reported that America is home to 325.7 million people. That means that over 100 million Americans own guns, and most of them own rifles. And every day, 100 million Americans don't commit mass shootings. In fact, every day, 100 million Americans don't shoot anyone at all. That's it for today, guys. Hopefully this video gives you something to think about. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and help change some minds. And if you really like my videos and want to help support my channel in other ways, you can do so over at Patreon or through a one-time donation through PayPal or various cryptocurrencies. As always, thanks so much for watching. Stay safe and happy shooting.